Are right, you guys ready? Yep. Yeah. Tell me when to start. <clears throat> we are live now. I'm Deep Cut. Welcome back to Cartoon Universe. I am joined today by fellow Cartoon Universe host Haley, as well as the cast. Oh, hold up. Sorry. I just heard I had the audio on. All right. I already ruined that. All right. Welcome back to Cartoon Universe. I am joined today by fellow co host Haley, as well as the cast and creator of Disney's Amphibia, including Matt Braley, the series creator, Anna Akana as Sasha. Uh, Justin Felbinger could not make it today as Sprig, but he might pop in, so look out for that. Amanda Layton as Polly. Bill Farmer as Hop Pop, also as the voice of Goofy from the Goof Troop. Troy Baker as Grimes is not here right now, but he's going to try and pop in. And Zara Fazal as General Yunan. How are you all doing today? Doing great. Good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's nice to be here. Thanks for being here. Uh, so to start, what we're going to do is just go around and have each of you introduce yourself one at a time and tell us uh, how you got started on the show, whether that's as the voice actor or as the creator of the series yourself, other projects that we might know you from, and uh, what else you might be working on that we can look out for in the future. And why don't we start with Matt Braley himself. Hey, um, yes, uh, I'm Matt. I'm the uh, EP and creator of Amphibia. Um, you may know me from things like Steven Universe and Gravity Falls and Big City Greens. Um, how did I get into this? Uh, been drawing ever since I was a kid. Always loved telling stories. After Gravity Falls ended, I didn't really have anything to go on to. And I thought, hey, maybe I can make my own show. Uh, 2.5 years later of, of a rigorous development period and I got a green light for a show and was lucky enough to work with some of the best voice actors around. So yeah, that is me, and I'm very excited to answer questions and hang out today. Well, thanks for being here. And over to Amanda Layton as Polly. Hey, I'm Amanda Layton. I play Polly Planter. Um, well, how I got started in this was uh, I auditioned for it, and then I I got it, and it was a miracle. And um, I I love this job. And you may also know me as um, Poppy from Trolls on Netflix and on Hulu. And also, let's see here, uh, Rain and Final Fantasy. And yeah, that's, oh, uh, Blossom from Powerpuff Girls. And then that's, oh, wow. that's that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And now over to Bill Farmer. Well, I've been uh, <clears throat> kicking around with at least Disney for about 35 years almost. Uh, been doing the voice of Goofy and Pluto, Horse, Horse Collar, Sleepy of the Seven Dwarves, Doc in the 7D, and a bunch of other ones for Disney for the last, uh, you know, decades, it seems like, and still going strong with Goofy and Pluto. And um, but a pride and joy is definitely doing Hot Pop. It was just an audition, one of the hundreds that I do all the time. And um, they liked what I brought to the table, I guess. And uh, it's it's a delight because unlike a lot of voice matching where you're you're doing the voice of an existing character and trying to sound like that, this I had more full reign to kind of determine what, you know, Hop Pop sounded like. And luckily, uh, uh, Matt agreed. And uh, it's just a joy to, to do Hop Pop. He's just my favorite. Well, thank you. And now Zara Fazal as a general unit. Hi, I am Zara Fuzzle, voice of General <laughs> Yunnan. Um, I, uh, you may know me from, I do a lot of work with Warner Brothers and DC Comics on Young Justice. I'm the voice of Talia Al Ghul and several of the Batman properties. Um, you might know me from Shira, where I play Mara. And I also do a lot of video games. Um, for those of you who play Apex Legends, you might recognize me as the announcer that says you are the Apex champion. Um, I got this role, General Yunnan, uh, through auditioning for it. It came across my auditions. And when I saw the script, I was so excited. It was from the episode Toad Catcher, and it features her iconic speech. And um, it was just, you know, I, I was so excited to to do my, my take on it. And I'm just so thankful that this character found me, that this show found me, because she's just such a blast. <laughs> and finally, we have Anna. I don't know how I'm supposed to everybody on this panel with their beautiful resumes. Um, I, I uh, you may know me from Amphibia or maybe Big City Greens where I play Gloria and just scream all the time. 
um, or I make YouTube content, which is my sort of biggest platform. I used to do a lot of stand-up comedy, so I transitioned that onto my onto YouTube so that people could watch it voluntarily instead of me harassing them at coffee shops when they didn't want to listen to jokes. Um, but I Matt and Eden to audition for it, much like everyone here, and I just really loved loved the show, and I thought it was such a beautiful encapsulation of strong female characters, female characters looking for their own identities, female friendships, toxic female friendships. Um, and I just, I'm, I'm very grateful to be here. So thank you. Well, we're happy to have all of you here. Uh, like I said before, we may be joined by Troy Baker and <clears throat> Justin Felbinger, who are the voices of Grime and Sprig respectively. Uh, most of these voice actors are gonna be signing autographed prints all weekend long. Uh, you can go down to the description where we have a link to the Streamly shop where you can buy your own. I'm personally gonna buy one of the uh, Frog Family full cast print as well as a Goofy print. Uh, for now, we're going to move over to Haley, who will ask some questions and uh, pick which voice actors you want to start with. Sure. So for the voice actors, what has been your favorite part of working with, on the projects um, of the on the show so far? So let's start with Amanda. Um, kind of similar to a Bill story, actually. So like all of my voiceovers, I've had to like I, I was voice matching for an existing character. So this was the very first role that I ever booked on my own where I got to come up with the voice and the character and kind of like really play around with it. And, um, you know, when I heard that I got it, it was just like, I did it, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> and just, you know, so grateful and so thankful. And so this is definitely one of or probably is my favorite character that I've ever done just because it's the first thing I ever got to like really create on my own. <laughs> and over to Bill Farmer. And, um, and now what was the question again? That's uh, what has been your favorite part of working oh, on? Right? Well, uh, everything, obviously creating the character. When I saw Hop Pop, I thought he had a little ascot and a little vest and everything. So when you come up with a voice, I thought he might be a Southern gentleman kind of thing. So I did a, a slightly more uh, Southern type of voice, but uh, then he kind of graduated to East Texas and that just kind of had the right amount of sass. And, um, you know, he likes to put on a rough exterior, but he's got a heart of gold. So it was fun developing that and getting into the character. Um, this series has so much depth to it that it's really fun stretching yourself as an actor and uh it, it's kind of the, the 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 tender moments it's not just just funny joke after joke after joke there's a lot of heart to it and that really is what interested me it's really fun to play those kind of characters that have a lot of depth and uh it's just uh and it's also fun i love 2d animation too and i love the way the show looks and the color scheme and just everything about it and over to Anna now. Oh man, um, I think much like Bill, I love the depth of the characters. I think Sasha in particular, you know, being kind of a bossy, mean girl who needs to control other people to feel safe is something I sort of relate to a lot. Like when I was in high school, I was definitely a Sasha. Um, and I loved that it was, the show doesn't feel like it's ever vilifying anyone for their flaws. It's like really painting everybody in a compassionate light. And I know that as a young woman, I, I wanted so badly to have cartoons that really dissected um, female friendships. And I think like Jennifer's body was the first piece of work I ever saw that really depicted that for me. And so I love that I'm working on a show that is, is so impactful to so many people. Like I was telling Matt before the stream started, I was looking through all of the fan art that he was retweeting on Twitter. And I was like, these people are so good. Like they're beautiful, amazing artists and they're teens and they love this show and they identify with the show. And I know when I'm a big fan, like my number one instinct is to either make fan art or look for fan art and like look at like little forums and see what people are talking about. And so I love being on a show where it's it's really touching people in that way and driving people to sort of put their own spin on it artistically. It's been amazing to see the show unfold in that way, having these characters, you know, barely even show up in season one and then seeing the depths of their relationships, especially Sasha's character. Uh, and finally over to Zara. 
gosh. Um, I have to shout out our voice director, Eden Regal. This was the first series that I had the opportunity to work with her with, and she's just wonderful. She really empowers you as the actor to just go for it and make really big choices. And she's just so warm and helps really sculpt uh, the performance with you. So I've really enjoyed working with her. And then another thing that I really love about this show is the inherent Asian-ness of it is an Asian American woman like seeing something like this is now available to kids in America it just blows my mind I was I when I watched um the beginning uh, the first episode of season three I started tearing up hearing the accents of Anne's parents like how often do we see that an Asian American family specifically a Thai American family speaking with accents like as the child of immigrants my parents had accents it's just so cool to see and I'm so happy that it's part of the rich Disney tapestry now um so it's just it's it's such a powerful show for so many reasons and that is another reason that I think um you know that I, I'm just so happy to be a part of it thank you and I don't think there's any reason Matt can answer this question what's been your favorite part of working on the show um I mean, I really uh, enjoy the kind of like people side of the job. Like it's a people job. And like, that's something I didn't really understand when I got into it. Like, um, but I've really developed some strong relationships with folks that I've worked with and have gotten to know them. It's impossible to divorce um, who these people are from like what they do on the show. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, so I would really get to know people in a very positive way. And I feel like it, it has only made us uh, produce better work. So that's something that was a surprise to me and something I really enjoyed, which is just like, oh, I like working with people. Um, yeah. Awesome. And finally, let's move on to our next question. Uh, what has been your favorite scene or episode to work on and why? And to start this one off, why don't we go to uh, Bill? Um, gosh, that's very difficult to figure which uh, my favorite. I really tend, I'm a Halloween freak. I love Halloween. I love scary. So in the first season, one of my favorites was uh, Night of the Spore because it was a kind of a zombie thing and it was kind of scary. The ones that are at night at the end where Polly has to save everybody because of the, you know, cannibalistic people that the, uh, the frogs that uh, ran the place. Uh, and the Halloween one, uh, where they we had a trilogy where you know everyone was telling sp scary stories. Those I think just from the story aspect, I like that because I just like scary stories and I love Halloween. Uh, from um, you know some of the uh, ones where there are really in depth performances, I enjoy those as well. I'm trying to think, of course, like. Um, Oh, with the Zappapedes, you know, and the, the Suspicion Island was silly and yet revealing in the same time. And uh, Hop Hop's, uh, you know, uh, hiding the box and, and being mad. Those kind of uh, more intimate scenes uh, I also love. Thank you. And why don't we move over to Zara? Repeat the question for me. I was lost. In uh, what is your favorite? Yeah, I get it. Uh, I, what is your favorite episode to oh. have worked on or favorite scene? Oh, okay. I will say probably my favorite scenes are going to be in this upcoming season. There's some really fun stuff that, uh, you know, we saw one side of the general last season and I'm so excited that we get to see more sides of her this season. But I mean, I loved the, the episode Toad Catcher. I mean, how fun was that? I, I have that speech memorized because I had to say it so many times <laughs> in the recording session. It was just so fun and so funny. Um, so I, that, that was definitely, definitely a highlight. <laughs> Thank you. And over to Amanda Layton. Man, that, that is such a hard question because I'm thinking of like 20 different episodes in my head all at once. Um, same as Bill, I love the Halloween episodes. Uh, those have always been my favorite, even like growing up and like watching cartoons. It's just, it's just so fun. And um, oh, I love the one and forgive me, I, I forget the title of it, but it's the one where Sprig and Polly are, are uh, they, they take um, the, the, the wagon and they're, they're riding it through the night. Oh yeah. And, night and there's the guy. Night yes, Rider, yeah. yes. Night yeah. Rider. Yes. And with like the guy with the hook and everything and stuff. And it ends up being like a statue, but he was like a ghost and oh, 
I love like those scary ones. <laughs> and um, the finales are always just like heartfelt and, and yeah. gut wrenching and all of that emotion. And I love those as well. Um, I mean, I love every episode. It's so hard to pick because really? there's something special in each one. <laughs> And on the note of finales, I just got to say, Matt, you really know how to put together a finale. Yeah. Like that's it, like I, good finales <laughs> are hard to come by these days. I love all these shows that we cover, but good finales. Ooh. I think um, like we're we're just so excited about them when we when we get to writing them. The first thing we do is just make a list of the badass shit we want to see. You know what I mean? Like and so I think starting from there, it's like that's the best because then you're just kind of like, what's our what's our dream you know, finale. And we just, we know the finale is just, we just want to blow it out every time. So anyway, I won't say any more than that, but like, yeah, thank you. I really appreciate that. We work hard on that stuff. Yeah. I'm looking forward to season three's finale. Cause I have to, that's all right. And finally uh, over to Anna, what is your favorite episode or scene to work on? I feel like most of my favorite episodes and scenes have been this third season. Um, so I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but for the first episode that Sasha appears in, I really loved doing that scene because I was like, oh, I've, I don't think I've ever played like a teenage girl who's manipulating a full grown frog to get out of jail and take command of his army. I was like, that is incredibly fun and interesting to play with and how she was sort of negging him and using his traits against him and offering something that she could you know only Sasha could kind of offer so I had so much fun in that first scene just really hamming up being um, a little antagonist thank you and over to Haley with our next question yeah so this one maybe some of you might come easily to others maybe not but what in what ways are you similar or different uh, from your character and or if maybe if you can't answer that, which character do you relate to the most? Uh, so let's go with Zara first. Oh gosh, um, how am I similar to General Yunnan? Uh, I'd say we both have pretty big egos. <laughs> I don't think mine is quite as big as hers, but um, I think though, honestly, what I relate to most about hers, even though there's this kind of, you know, presentational outer layer, Inside, I think she has a very clear sense of right and wrong. Um, and so I think I relate to that. There's a strong sense of what is just and what is not. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, how am I different? I'm not really bloodthirsty or a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's yeah. And over to Bill. Um. Well, it, when you create a character, you've got to kind of put a little bit of yourself in the character, or I don't think it rings true. So there are definitely a, a lot of parts of me that kind of fit into uh, Hot Pop. Sometimes you can, uh, he, he'll use, uh, he's more defensive than I am. Uh, he'll use uh, kind of anger and kind of uh, this overall anger to uh, deflect things from hurting him and he'll protect his emotions uh, with that. So th that's not me, but um, just as kind of happy, go lucky, outlook. He loves Anne, I can see that. I you use things in your own life to kind of draw upon your love of your family and you transfer it to this. So you gotta use those real emotions to get a real performance. So um, there's a lot of it in there. Now, obviously, uh, vocal things and some other situational things you just have to use your imagination but ultimately it comes down to there got to be real emotions in that instance when you're recording it and uh, the more real you can make it and the more you can put into the character the more you get out of that character so yeah there's a lot of uh, a lot of me in there in hot pop that was beautiful thank you uh and how about amanda I am identical to Polly. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, Polly has like a really like underneath, you know, like that, that really like tough, like get out of my way, you know, exterior and stuff. She's got that little sweet heart and everything. And I feel like I identify with that. I am sensitive. So I identify with that part of her. Um, I'm probably not as like, you know, tough in your face as she is. Um, we both love candy uh and yeah yeah there's a lot of me and 
you know, in Polly and stuff, but also um, she's very different from me at the same exact time. <laughs> And finally, Matt, you don't have a character on the show as far as I'm aware, uh, but with season three being the final season, is there anything that you didn't get to explore in the show that you wish you did? Um, so it's a little difficult to talk about, you know, until after the entire season has been seen. But I will say that, like, I'm such a sci-fi fantasy nerd that there's so many, like, kind of cool concepts that, like, I would love to just kind of, like, explore more in depth but like there just never is a really good platform in these shows to have a person just like gab about string theory or dyson spheres like you know what i mean like within the episode like so like <laughs> i have a follow-up question to that. But... <laughs> there's there's a there's a there's a there's a limit i suppose that you can do that stuff and i think that that's why authors they they will write things like the cimmerillion or journal number three for Alex Hirsch, where it's just like, all right, here's blah, like everything. You know what I mean? Like every little bit of like logic and mechanics that I couldn't get to in the show. So, but I do also really admire the writers who they leave a lot to, or not a lot, but they leave a good amount to audience interpretation. And I think that's, that's good. I, I, I don't remember who, who coined the term, but like soft world building where it's, it's like, like dark souls or something where like, the, the narrative is sort of delivered in this soft way where like it's there and it's all there, but like there's a lot you can infer as a player or as an audience member. And that's that's a lot of fun too. So yeah, there's there's there will always be things that I wish I could have just gone on and on and on about, but at the same time, like, you know, editing is storytelling or storytelling is editing. And at a certain point, you do need to make some decisions about what's right for the characters and what's right for the momentum of the piece. So yeah have a follow-up question to that i'm gonna to get to it but first i want to make sure we don't miss out on anna and how she relates to sasha she tapped into that a little bit in the previous questions but what do you feel you have in common with or not with your character um i think you know i i tend to be a goblin in my friendships like i'm very like cheesy i like if my friend compliments me i'll be like very foamy because i don't like vulnerability so i think sasha and i are both like natural leaders kind of have like that same fear of being abandoned and so they kind of rally people around to make sure they don't get abandoned um but i i feel like i identify with sasha a lot for better or worse um but I guess the places in which we're, we're quite different is I think I learn lessons a little faster than Sasha, whereas she kind of has to learn the same lessons a few times till it sticks. Thank you. Now back to Matt with my follow-up question on that. Uh, so I only got into the show recently, so maybe this has been discussed before, but my immediate theory was that this show takes, uh, Amphibia is in an alternate timeline and that it's really just Earth where evolution kind of went a little different. <laughs> like Planet of the Apes. That's an uh, it, less about the future, more like an alternate time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is there any merit to that? Is... Oh. <laughs> um, I, you know, I would never want to dash your theory upon the rocks by saying like, that's not you can true. Do. No, I, I think that what I would say is that I do think of Amphibia as its own separate universe that is not, um, uh influenced by others do you know what i mean so it's it's its own pocket universe and i i don't think i don't think i ever conceived it as an offshoot of ours or something like that but you know again because the show doesn't like firmly say one way or another i mean i think it's cool if you know you got your head cannon and <laughs> it's a neat theory <laughs> It made sense to me because even the development of the frogs, you know, they still have tadpole to mm -hmm. frog stage. So is that oh, that? Do you do you mean that's like it's like a world that like if if frogs emerged as like the 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 primary evolutionary kind of victor? Like because I mean that's that's definitely true. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I mean like, it's literally like planet Earth, but an alternate timeline where humans didn't become the dominant species, if you will. Like it's. Yeah, like I, they branched off at an earlier point. Yeah, for 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 sure. I think the only thing that would kind of fly against that is like the crazy like formation of the continents and like you know maybe if there was a little bit more like similarity uh, geography wise to like our planet that might 
stick a little bit more, but I do think there is definitely like, you know, it's so funny because my, one of my writers, um, I can't get into it too much, but uh, he had this crazy pitch for like, like, and then the characters see a glimpse uh, of another world called Marsupia. And I was like, no, no, we're not, we're, we're not doing that. You know what I mean? Like, like, uh, <laughs> and he was so, he was so like, it was such a good pitch too. And I was just like, no. <laughs> fair enough i don't know i just saw uh, in the books about it there was all these different planets that all just kind of mm. like they were connected not like the realms so that kind of made me wonder but why don't we move over to Haley with another question for the general cast sure so without spoilers if obviously uh what uh can you say fans uh should expect from your character uh this season so let's say, uh start with bill um well, um, I mean, Hot Pop is Hot Pop in a in a new world in Los Angeles. He, he it, he's you know he's kind of set in his ways, and so the ways that though uh, the way that he realizes life and the way it is in Los Angeles is obviously a little bit different. And so they get in all sorts of different uh, predicaments and stuff because of that. Um, more of the same, but a little bit more uh, because now we kind of have two worlds. Uh, the and I always think of them as a parallel dimension in a way that they kind of go back and forth. There's kind of the stuff in the, the amphibia world. There's the stuff in the real world and how they interact and all of that. There's a lot of great stuff. And I don't want to give too much away, but uh, yeah, it's what you've come to expect of the uh, characters, uh, Hop Pop and everybody else, and their relationships uh, grow in even new and different ways. Thank you. And why don't we move over to Anna? Yeah, I would say um, you can really expect Sasha to continue uh, eating up a lot of bad guys. Um, and I love all of her action scenes. I feel like her action scenes are so much fun. I did a lot of screaming and action noises in season three. Um, and I think things get pretty cosmic. That's all I will say. Interesting. All right. And then over to Zara. Mm, without giving anything away um you know i think i think fans are going to be pretty happy um with where things go in in season three i think there's a lot to look forward to mm, all right and amanda well polly has legs now so now she's you know gonna get into some trouble some predicaments but she's also got legs so she's more mobile you know she's <laughs> are we she gonna get anything like the baby fight again Mm. Well, you know, it's Polly. She loves to <laughs> fight with everybody. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be really cool because everybody is kind of, you know, the characters are still the same, but they're just adjusting to this whole new world and finding their way, you know, under these circumstances. So, yeah, without giving anything away, it's <laughs> going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> And finally, Matt, what can we expect from the show as a whole in season three? Um, so, you know, there's there's a lot of payoffs in season three that have been a long time coming. And I think I think one of the things that people can look forward to the most that hasn't really been touched on is that um, there's a lot of season one elements that return in season three in a gratifying way. So I think that's something very specific that you can look out for. Um, especially when it comes to, I, I'm like, this is like kind of a colloquial term, season 3B. Do you know what I mean? Like that, I, I don't even think we ever, I don't think we, internally we never call it that. I think it's just what the fans call it. But I think yeah. that, yeah, there's some, there's some fun stuff coming back. Awesome. All right. And do you want to move on, Haley, to the next question? Uh, sure. So what has been the most positive experience you've had with the fandom um, yeah, we'll start with that one, and we'll, we're going to do the opposite after. So uh, let's start with Amanda. Hmm. Well, looking at all the art, that's so much fun, just watching people's, you know, artwork and everything. And then we were at D23, and I will always remember this because it was one of the coolest moments. Yes, the puppet! So there was a fan, and they made a puppet of uh, Polly, and they let me use it and do the voice and everything, and she had, like, a little bucket, and it was, like, just one of the coolest experiences. And, um, yeah, that's definitely been my favorite. And what about Anna? 
this might be a tad controversial. Um, I don't know how old you are if you're watching at home. If you're very young, cover your ears and eyes. Um, but I like the first like uh, romantic dream I ever had was with Freddie the Frog, like way back in the day. Like I dreamt he picked me up in his convertible and like we went on a mission together. Matt already knows what I'm about to say. Um, <laughs> and I remember very early on, people were drawing like really cute shipping fan art of like Grime and Sasha. And though I don't necessarily condone it, I was like, oh my God, I remember what it was like to be just a young girl wanting to marry Freddie the Frog so <laughs> bad. And so I'm like, I'm sure all of these young people are watching Sasha and Grime and are just like, oh my God, I, I wanna be <laughs> in that amphibia relationship. And so I think that was my favorite part seeing like all the sort of like anime of like Sasha blushing and being carried around by Grime and like them like slow dancing together. I thought that was just very, very sweet um, and reminiscent of my childhood. Uh, what about Zara? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Again, the fan art is incredible in this fandom. I've had mostly 100% positive experiences with Amphibia fans on Twitter. I kind of lurk in some of the, the art tags to see what people are doing. And I'm amazed how General Yunnan became kind of such a fan favorite character, given how little she is um, in, in season two. But people really latched on to her design. I mean, she's an incredibly designed character. She's so cool. And um, I have to give a shout out to Dark Zircon, the artist. They drew a picture of me as General Yunnan in my voiceover booth at home. And I love, I love, I love that. I need to get it printed out and put it in my booth. The other thing I saw recently that really tickled me was somebody made a graphic of if General Yunnan and Andreas were both running for president, who would win the Electoral <laughs> College? And it's just this superimposed still of Yunnan like leaning back over the map of America and Andreas only managed to win DC where Yunnan took the rest of the country. I laughed long and hard at just the absurdity, the amazing that somebody made this really beautiful graphic. Um, yeah, you you guys have wild imaginations and I love it. <laughs> it's amazing to see what the fans will do when they're just honestly just having a good time. I love uh, it. What about you, Bill? Yeah, the, uh, the fan art is absolutely amazing. And I, I need to go back in and, and check it out more. I was over at Disney and a lot of the artists have the, some things that fans have sent in up on the wall and uh, of some of their favorites. And the detail is amazing. A lot of great artists out there and they're taking the whole characters and putting them in their own little scenarios and things. That's, that's always great. Um, at uh, Comic-Cons and stuff, fans... Um, it seems like they know so much more about the series than I do because they'll ask questions that I just, okay, I don't even remember that <laughs> doing that. And uh, it, it can go back, you know, uh, decades, at least with, uh, with uh, Goofy. I mean, people are still ask me stuff that we did in a Goofy movie in 95 and stuff. This stuff, and that always sticks in my mind, that this is here to stay. It's it's imprinted in the cosmos. It will be there forever. So uh, I'm just glad that people are that involved that they and such love for the characters that they want to do all of this artwork and these scenarios that they, they come up with. Thank you. And while we're on the uh, note of artwork, there is artwork for sale. If you go to the streamly link in the description down below, for those of you who have joined in a little late, just a reminder, <clears throat> um, a lot of the voice actors on the show here, as well as a few who couldn't make it, are signing autograph prints all weekend long. I bought, I'm buying two of them. I'm getting a cast print and a goofy print, which I'm putting in my recording booth for my YouTube videos. So I always have something to look at there. Uh, so you should all get one too. Like I said, description down below. Uh, and finally, Matt, what was your, uh, you know, favorite fan experience besides this one? Well, it has to be, um, you know, during the whole season two finale, True Colors kerfuffle. Um, it just felt like the fandom really came out in strong defense of the show. And it was one of the things that kind of like kept me going because it was rough. And but the number one thing that I thought was the sweetest was just everybody pretending they hadn't been spoiled because they absolutely were <laughs> like, there's no there's no way because like I went on the YouTube I think the day it leaked and like pow there was like a thumbnail like in the corner of just like rah, like Marcy getting and I just thought everyone was super sweet like and sort of 
you know, aware of my feelings and no one was like, everyone was like, well, I didn't see it. And I was like, you totally did, but that's okay. You know what I mean? Like, I really appreciate it. So yeah, that whole thing, like the kind of outpouring of support and, and from the voice actors too, and from, you know, my friends and also fans of the show, it, it really helped me and, and a lot of the team uh, kind of get through that rough patch. So that was like a big highlight, a silver lining, if you will. Thank you. Real quick, I'm going to let Haley ask the next question, but I just want to thank all the super chats that we've been getting. We've got Jada, we've got Kez Daddy, we've got a lot from, uh, I think, I can't, uh, forgive me if I mispronounce this, Piemete. Uh, just thank you all for the super chats. We will try to answer some of these questions. We can't answer all of these questions. A lot of them are clearly spoiler based, uh, but we do see your chats and we thank you. So over to Haley. Yeah, so kind of on the opposite end it doesn't have to be negative it, it's just basically what's a crazy uh or strange experience you've had with the fandom so far uh let's also start off again with amanda i haven't really had any crazy or anything like that i mean yeah i mean again the puppet i mean like i just never thought that somebody would make a puppet of polly and i thought that that was super cool um yeah that's yeah, I don't really have any crazy stories. <laughs> what about Zara? Yeah, same. Again, like uh, uh, all of my interactions with folks in the Amphibia fandom have been so positive. I will say what is kind of crazy is for this Streamily signing we're doing this weekend, I've had so many people request that I write out the entire speech <laughs> on the on, the, on, the, the, on the, the prints. And so I had to go out and buy like five new Sharpies yesterday because I know I'm going to run out of ink. So that's what I'm going to do today. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Just get a stamp for that part. Just sign it at the that's end. That's a great idea. I, yeah, I, I would not. You, you know, authenticity, though, that's great that you're doing it. Um, <laughs> moving over to Bill. Um, well, there haven't been really any crazy ones other than, like, to repeat myself, I... Um, uh, the fans know more about this than I do. Uh, it's kind of interesting. And what a lot of people don't realize when you record a script, you're just doing your lines and you don't hear the interaction of the other characters. So, and you don't see anything because we do the recording before it's animated. So you can kind of envision you the way you think an episode is going to go, but until you see it on the television, you really don't know. So we're kind of learning all of this stuff as it is aired just like the fans um, and they'll fans will ask me questions and it's not, I'm trying to hide anything. I just don't know. <laughs> and so uh, I'm just always amazed at the, uh, the fans and uh, the love that they have for these characters and the stories. And it's, you know, it's more than the sum of the parts. It's uh, it's an experience that people carry with them. And uh, I'm just glad that they love the series so much. You have such beautiful sentiments. It's like listening to like uh, inspirational radio. It's great. Uh, <laughs> finally, Anna. Um, I haven't had any really crazy experiences with the fandom. Um, I guess like they've just been incredibly kind, which is always uh, awesome when you have a fandom that's so sweet. Like uh, they're, uh, they're the magazine and stuff. Be like, did you know that Sasha has a YouTube channel? And so a lot of my comments now are like, it's Sasha Weber. <laughs> Um, and so they, they seem just like also so invested in who we are as people, not necessarily just the character and very eager to like support, which I, I just find very, very awesome that Matt has created a universe where um, everyone who's a fan of the show is kind of just like a supportive, nice person. <laughs> Heads up your audio. I don't know if anyone else is hearing this, but part of it keeps ducking out there. Oh, yeah. is it did better? anyone else hear that? Or was yeah, it just I, cool. I think it was, it was, uh, legible but like a little underwater right oh okay yeah so just, yeah you're yeah. good though uh, and finally matt uh what has been your weirdest or <laughs> okay so sometimes like you get a letter and that's chill but like uh then you're like i don't know how you got this address but um <laughs> i did get a letter uh from a fan during the, again the true colors thing and it was such a funny letter because like it was in support but it was also a little like don't give up, man. Don't give up. And I was like, oh, okay, thank you. Like, well, I'm like reading it. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing my best over here. You know what I mean? But it was like, it was like encouraging, but also a little like, 
it was a little like aggro. <laughs> so like home address. <laughs> yeah, no, I and I moved since then. But like, yeah, it was one of those things where I was just like, mm, I don't know. I don't know how you guys got this. And I also did get I also got like a phone call once and I was just like, mm, I don't know how you got this, but that's not that's not not super chill. But it's funny because like the messages are always like super. I mean, thus far uh pretty sweet you know what I mean so it's it's not a big deal like I think I literally think that the phone call message I got was like something about the music in the show like could you make it available on Spotify you know what I mean I was like I don't know man (laughs) please don't 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 call this (laughs) yeah but there's that's one side of of the whole thing that is always a little bit like frightening where it's like hey don't do that (laughs) interesting wow that's uh (laughs) <laughs> that's a lot of weird ones yeah uh for this next question this one's very voice actor centric if you could swap roles with anyone else on the show who would you choose and why i think i'd be grime i love i love i mean i don't know if i could get that deep let's but... hear it let's hear it <laughs> oh sasha like i just love like his gravelly like his voice is so like interesting. I want a podcast in Grimes' voice. You know, like, I, I love it. <laughs> like serious. And uh, what about you, Bill? I, it would definitely be uh, Grime as well. And uh, actually, in the v- pilot, <laughs> I kind of uh, just temporarily voiced. You did. The, kind of, I did. Kind of. I, it wasn't called Grime in that day. I don't think, but. Um, the thing that Troy did with it, which I could not have done, was to mix in that evil, mean sound with a sense of whimsy and uh, this kind of teddy bear heart in there as well. He, the balance he did was just tremendous, but definitely it's fun to play the villains too. It just is. It's, and I never get to do that. So <laughs> that was a scary ass voice, Bill. In the, I remember it was like, for the human. <laughs> like, it, was <laughs> like, it was like that kind of, you know, but uh, to maintain that for very long would be tough, but uh, definitely playing a villain is is always fun to do now amanda you've actually swapped roles with sprig before with justin felbinger in one episode where you were impersonating each other uh but if you had a choice who would you switch with grime no i'm kidding (laughs) (laughs) even though that would be awesome because you're right playing a villain is always fun um i'm weird i want i the first thing in my head was like i want to be like a creature like like the, like the caterpillar or a snail or something, or um, I lack tulips, the, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> and finally, Zara. Oh gosh, I, I gotta say, like, I would love to be a villain. Villains are so much fun. And um, I would love to, I'm not going to attempt his voice. I would love to play Andreas because to be like the big bad, oh, I'm such a big fan of Keith David, by the way, ever since Gargoyles was like my jam growing up. And so to hear his, uh, I love when he plays a villain. It'd be fun to like take on the role of a, of a true villain. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And for Matt, a question for you specifically, what major changes, if any, would you say the show has, uh, what major changes, if any, would you say this show has from the way you imagined it in your head when it first started? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before I get into that, I just want to say very quickly that Troy specifically said he was going for like a feline, like Alan Rickman kind of thing with Grime. I remember he was like, oh, you want like, yeah, the like kind of like, because he was like kind of cat, cat-like. And I was like, yeah, I love like the kind of chair Connie, you know what I mean? I. Yeah. I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was so great. And with Andreas, with Keith David, that is such a career highlight. I was also a huge fan of Gargoyles. And actually, you know, when we were in quarantine, I would, I, I hardly ever saw him because Eden was working with him and doing such great work. But one day she sent me like, you got to hear this. And it was just Keith David singing. Like he was just singing in the booth and it was from like a, a love affair to remember. And it was so beautiful. And I just remember being like, yeah, you just like listening to like, like kind of like crying a little bit, like, man, it's, it's just beautiful stuff. Um, unfortunately, Andrews never sings, but that would have been really funny if he did. Cause like, man, Keith David <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can, well, this time, maybe I can figure something out. Um, just throw it in the finale. <laughs> just, just, 
<laughs> Big musical number. He's just singing the end credits and then we're out. Um, yeah, oh, why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and actually, good segue from when Bill was talking about voicing Grime in the pilot and he was so scary and he was he was clearly like that Urukai from Lord of the Rings who's like, find the halflings, you know what I mean? Like the, the original vision for the show was just, it was a lot grittier and it was a lot darker and like really like, you know, there was a town, but like uh, Anne and Hop Hop and Polly and Sprig, they really lived out in the middle of like fucking nowhere. You know what I mean? Like they were, they were more in a big scary woods and like they would go to town. But like, I remember in the original pitch, it was like funny that it would take them like a few days to get there so that they really felt like isolated. And, you know, in development, we pivoted a little bit more towards community because community was something that like, you know, people wanted to see more in, in the show. And like, also I love, you know, shows like The Simpsons that have this beautiful cast of just lovable characters and so I'm so glad that like we did eventually develop that community because I love it I love Loggle and Mrs. Croker and you know what I mean like these these frogs are like I love these frogs so that was that was a difference though the vibe was different and also when it was conceived I, I really thought it was gonna be super short like like almost one season or half a season like very short you know what I mean so it made sense then that the tone like was a little bit darker, grittier, and that the story was like kind of, it was was able to resolve itself um, much faster. And it, in the original treatment, the story actually sort of ended with reunion. Like that was, that was sort of it. Like it sort of ends with reunion and Anne and her frog family kind of, you know, we're going to find a way out of here. You know, I swear it. And that was all I had in my head when I first started pitching. And then obviously it, it, blew out and blossomed into this much bigger thing that is now three seasons but that was like a big difference like it and you know it, I was coming off of um over the garden wall too which I just I love it so much like I love it so much and I was so obsessed with the idea of like like very short you know what I mean so but I'm super glad we're we are where we are I think you got a perfect trilogy going here so far man all right, let's move over to Haley with a question for the voice actors. Okay. Um, wait, which which one? I don't, I don't see anymore. Are we at the end of the list? Yeah. Oh, shoot, we are. <laughs> okay, wow. Uh, Speed well, run. We were kind of expecting uh, a few more people yeah. here. That usually helps fill out the time a little past the hour, but it's been great having you guys here. I think we did have one more Matt Braley question. Uh a fun part of the show is examining the world of Amphibia itself and its lore. Are there any fun facts about the history or the world of Amphibia or its lore that never might qu that never quite made it explicitly into the show but that you want to share with fans? Well, this is similar to the question about like, was there stuff you couldn't really fit into the show? And, you know, again, you will have to see the whole thing to really, you know, uh, understand my answer. But there is parts of Amphibia that like, there's, there's obviously, you know, Andrus is old, he's a thousand years old, and there's this whole world that was kind of his youth and his, the golden age, you know what I mean, of this civilization that does get referenced and we get into it in season three, but it's the kind of thing that like, I mean, you could have like a spinoff, there's so much like you could do there. It, it is like Lord of the Rings in that way where, you know, there's a thousand years prior and then there's sort of where we are today which is always very funny to me in Lord of the Rings that it's like wait so it's been like 2,000 years and you guys still only have catapults you know what I mean like that's a long time to not develop <laughs> some technology um but yeah so I guess if anything that golden age era it would be so fun to explore uh more of it and get to know more of the characters um and that sort of thing I think would be really awesome Awesome. Well, before we go, we got some super chats and other fan submitted questions we can actually go through. So I thought we'd start with one for the voice cast, uh, which is just what has been your experience? Uh, do you guys record together or separately? And, you know, what are some favorite lines that you've heard someone else if you've recorded together? Uh, do you want to start? Anyone have any stories they want to start off with or Bill? Well, um, I don't know if you can see behind me. Uh, I'm in my studio here, and that behind me is where we did the almost entire season three. Uh, my son's an audio engineer, so I have it easy. He runs the board and handles the levels and all of that, and uh, it's Pro Tools certified, all that kind of stuff. And um, it's we do record as solo, 
I'll get on a Zoom call, just like we are here with, uh, with Eden, and my son will sit here, and I do the lines, and we'll do, oh, let's try another take, and we'll do this, or this is the situation, and then we just send the files in. We email the files from the computer here to Disney, and they put it all together. It's not unlike going to the studio, except I don't have to, uh, uh, you know, drive down the block to the studio. I can do it right here at home. Um, I wish we could do ensemble because it's so fun seeing everybody and working with everybody. It's a little tougher on the actor to kind of imagine the way Anne would say something or Polly would say something. But as you go along in the series, you kind of know how they would say it and you get better at reacting kind of hearing their voices in your head. What about you, Amanda? Yeah, same. I mean, we all record separately. And it's kind of funny because like throughout the season, like when I would like get a new script and I would read it, I could hear Sprig talking in my head. I could hear Hop Pop talking. You know, I could hear Anne like, and it's really funny. Like we're, I feel like we're all really good at being in tune with each other, even though we've never had a group record. And that, that, that's really cool. And uh, same, all of season three, I started out in my closet. I didn't know anything about recording from home. I learned how to become my own engineer. Like, I didn't even know what like an interface was and all this stuff. And I, it's really funny because I started like recording. I got this really nice mic and I started recording and I was like sending it, you know, like to, to like my agent. And I'm like, does this sound right? Like, why does this sound like I'm, I'm underwater? And they're like, Amanda, because you're using the computer mic. You're not even using the mic that you have hooked into your <laughs> laptop. And I'm like, oh, okay. So it was a lot of like <laughs> trial and error. But um, I mean, now we know how to do it all from home, which is really cool. So it's nice. <laughs> and what about Anna? Um, yes, we we all record separately. Um, sometimes I have the joy of hearing everyone else's lines with, for my scene if, if they've already edited something like that together. But mostly I get to hear Matt um, do a lot of the lines, <laughs> which I, I really love in like animatics or sometimes like he's reading a Sasha line and I try to like match uh, what he's doing and which I love when I get to hear Matt do the lines because I'm like, oh, this is like how the creator intends the emotion to be because most of the time when you hear like scratches and you're supposed to match it, it's just someone reading it very deadpan and funny. Um, and so I, I always love hearing what Matt infuses into a scene with his own voice. I think that's such a fun part of it. And what about you, Zara? Yeah, I mean, same as what everybody has said. Uh, lots of solo recording, um, even before the pandemic, I think uh, when I recorded for season two, it was, um, I was the only actor there. Uh, what I will say though is, so often in this process, there's something called ADR where we get episodes either fully animated or part partially animated and, um, there might be an adjustment maybe the like it's called a retake like maybe they needed oh this character is farther away so we need a one version of the line that's more called out so i love i love adr because then we can see the whole thing together and yeah just like anna was saying there's sometimes temporary voices but sometimes there are the final performances from your fellow actors that i love because especially in um you know when you're building character relationships when the back and forth between two characters is very important it helps so much to just have a sense of the other person's tone and energy. And so I'm real, not all shows have budgets to do ADR. And I'm really happy that Amphibia, I've had the opportunity to see some things and hear some things so I can adjust accordingly. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna run through some super chat questions. I'm sorry if I didn't see all of them. Uh, but uh, we had, a, I can't even remember all the names of the questions, but some people just said, you know, hello, thank you. There's a lot of people just showing their support for all of you being here. Uh, <clears throat> we also got one question asking, uh, what can we expect from Grimes in season three? Matt, you're on mute. I was like, I guess this is for me. Yeah. Um, so Grimes and Sasha mm -hmm. feature heavily in 3B. I keep trying to remember like how the fans talk about it. And I think it is so gratifying to see where they end up. I think that Grime is the kind of character 
who in season one, he was just a soldier and he just had this job that he was actually not very successful at because he was too aggressive and he was too kind of scary and he couldn't control his troops. And I think where you see him at the end of the show is very surprising and gratifying. Um, and of course, Troy's performance is incredible. I'm such a fan and kind of some emotional places that Grime can get to are a lot of fun. And also he, he gets paired with a character in one specific episode later that is quite funny. Interesting. I'm curious to see who that's going to end up being. Uh, this one's a weird question. I don't know if you would know the answer to this one, but Lombax Elite asked, is the mailman Newt from the episode Lost in Newtopia named Oliver? Hmm. Someone paid to ask this, so I don't. Uh, we refer to him as Newtsy, like Newsy. So I don't know if his name is Oliver, but that might be just kind of like them asking if it's an Oliver Twist reference. But we affectionately refer to this Newt as Newtsy. Hmm. All right. Uh, J Star Wars asked, did Alex do Alex Hirsch, uh, he means, did Alex do any ad living for the Gravity Falls uh, episode? Yes, he did. Alex loves doing ad lib. And something that was always so fun is that He'll do, you know, the lines that you brought him in to do, but he will always do like 15 minutes of just the most bananas takes you'll, you'll ever hear just him screaming by Bitcoin into the mic. You know what I mean? Just the craziest shit. And I think there was one, no, there, there were a few or three maybe ad lib lines that we ended up dropping in that were just so funny. Um, maybe when he was talking about like, you know, uh, now we're cooking with gas or whatever it is we frogs use. You know what I mean? Just kind of like a tongue in cheek <laughs> acknowledgement that he's like a guest role in this world. Like he's not even, he's not even quite sure what the rules are, you know? So yeah, it was a, it was always wonderful to work with him. Um, and a little fun fact is that he, he has to do the Seuss voice first because the Grunkle voice hurts. So like, if he starts with the Grunkle voice, he'll be his voice will be too scratchy by the time he gets to the Seuss. And I think I messed that up. I think we had him do the curator first, and then we got to Seuss. It was like, oh no, his throat. <laughs> awesome. We're approaching the end here. Uh, just a reminder for super chats. I appreciate we appreciate the super chats, but uh, we we're not going to ask any questions that are just asking for deliberate spoilers. So apologies to those who keep trying to do that. Um, there was one more question. It looked like it just disappeared. Uh, it, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, if you were ever approached to make Amphibia in a Kingdom Hearts world, uh, could you also write it where you could also write it? Uh, where would it start and how would it go? I feel like Bill knows more about Kingdom Hearts than I do. <laughs> Bill, Bill, do you know, I, I honestly, and this is, I mean, you're going to take away my nerd card. I've, I've never played a Kingdom Hearts game. I did. I have. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I listened to the music. I love the music. And we just we just recently did a karaoke thing as a crew and we sang Simple and Clean. And that song is bananas. It doesn't make it. It's like, <laughs> uh, does that mean I have to meet your father? Like it has the weirdest lines in it that are just like, whoa, I don't think this was written for the game. Um, but I, I don't know a damn thing about Kingdom Hearts. So I, I can tell you what I think Kingdom Hearts is about. So I'm sure they pipe into different worlds and they're fighting some kind of nameless darkness. Like I, I'm, I'm picking some of this up, right? Yeah. There's like an evil, yeah. evil organization. It's, I'm sure it's corrupting the worlds and you know, they gotta go and they gotta team up with Pooh Bear or whatever and kind of like beat it back and then, and then quantum leap to the next world, right? Like I, I, I think I follow. So probably they get to Amphibia and it would take place in season one because that's like kind of a nice comfy area to kind of make a lot of references and play around. And I think, you know, there would be some kind of heartless, that's what they're called, right? That has kind of shown up in, in the forest of Wartwood and they need to save the town. And then after they do that, after, you know, bonding and don't they, they have to turn into frogs, right? So like Goofy, Donald and like Sora. They would be the frog amphibian counterpart. Yeah, yeah, they would have to be like frog versions, which would be very cute to see. So it'd be like Goofy, Donald, Haley, Joel Osment, like kind of <laughs> like as as frogs. And uh, Anne wouldn't know that they were like, you know, she wouldn't know that Sora was a human or something. So they'd team up, they'd beat 
whatever crazy praying mantis heartless it was and then jam on to the next world or whatever it is. I mean, I'd love to see it, but yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Cool. <laughs> that would be cool. And yeah, does that, does that sound accurate? Anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bill, what is that? Is that how the game that's that's that sounds exactly like what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah, in like right, Kingdom Hearts that 5. That's that okay. would be that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. All right, cool. That's Sorry, literally no. a level in Kingdom Hearts 5. Okay, okay like, great, great. Writing it as you see. Uh so we've got a bunch of super chats. Just want to thank like Hannah and Lumity and Peyote and uh, just everyone who's super Peyote. chatting. Uh, we can't ask all these questions, and I think we're gonna wrap it up now. Uh, so thank all of you. Thanks to all of you for being here on the channel today. This has been an amazing experience. Uh, and just a reminder, a lot of these voice actors, as well as some of the ones who could not make it here, will be signing autograph prints. There is a link in the description to streamily.com where you can buy an autograph print. Again, I'm getting one with the entire Frog family, as well as one for Goofy, signed by Bill Farmer, because that's iconic, and you all should too. I'm buying a uh, bunch myself too. I'm like, ooh, I can't wait for these. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any chance you would sign mine too? Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's logistics there. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> all right, well, thank, thank you, you all for being here and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, right, you guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank